Hey everybody, Johnny here. In this video, we're going to take a look at a practical use for geometry nodes. In this case, it's for a stack of paper that we can use with a randomized shuffle and the ability to set how tall the stack of paper is going to be. Let's get into it. To start with, let's get rid of our camera and our light, as we're not going to need them in this tutorial. We're going to use our cube to make our piece of paper that we're going to duplicate into our stack. Opening up the end panel will set the dimensions of this piece of paper. We're going to set it to a standard letter sized piece of paper, which is 210 millimeters by 279.4 millimeters by 0.1 millimeters thick. We'll go ahead and name this piece of paper. Just to get it out of our way, we'll add a new collection and move it there. And then we'll hide that collection. We're going to need a dummy object to create our geometry node tree on. We can add any type of mesh we like. I'm going to call this stack of paper. Expanding this bottom window, I'm going to open the geometry node editor and add a new tree to this object. I am using Blender 2.93 beta because it has the addition of mesh primitives in the geometry nodes. For this project, I'm going to use a mesh primitive line. This will determine the points where each piece of paper will sit in our stack. We're going to connect that to our group output. The line mesh primitive node has two modes, offset and endpoints. The offset mode determines the starting point of your line and then the distance between each point on that line. The endpoints mode determines the starting point and the ending point and then subdivides that line by count. For this project, we're going to use offset. Since our piece of paper is 0.1 millimeters thick, I'm going to add the offset as 0.1 millimeters. So now this line starts at 000, and each point on the line goes up 0.1 millimeters and stays at 00 on the X and Y. To get a better visualization, let's go ahead and add a point instance node and point it at our piece of paper. One thing we're going to want to do is jump over to our piece of paper real quick and apply scale, as the scale of the object does matter in geometry nodes. At this point, I can increase the height of my stack by increasing the count of my line. I will want to control this from outside of the geometry node tree later on, so let's go ahead and hook up count to my group input. I'll rename this to Sheets of Paper. Our default will be 100, our minimum will be 1, and we'll leave the maximum at 10,000. We may also want to be able to control the thickness of our pieces of paper if we have different types of paper later on. So we'll want to be able to control this vector. I could plug this vector into the group input, and so then I would have an offset vector I could set. But this is too many options. My 0 and 0 here are going to get overwritten later, so I don't want to control those. So if I just want to control the Z, I'm going to need to break out this vector into a separate node. To do that, I'll use a vector combine XYZ. I'm going to get rid of my previous output and plug the Z into my group input. This will be my paper thickness. I'm going to want the default to be 0.001, a minimum of 0, and a maximum of 10,000. You can of course set your min and max to whatever you like. So now, from my modifier stack, I can adjust my sheets of paper and my paper thickness if I was going to use a different paper object. Actually, I'm going to want my default to be 0.0001, not 0 0.001. Trying to keep my geometry nodes clean, I'm just going to collapse this combine XYZ. The next thing we're going to want to do is randomize the position on the X and Y plane of each sheet of paper. To do that, we're going to use an attribute randomize node. We'll change the type to vector since position is captured as a vector. Instead of replacing or creating the new value, we're going to add to the existing value. The random value that we're going to add, we're going to set the min and max to zero to start with. So this way there's no change to the position. I'm going to set the minimum to negative 0.01 on the X and Y. And then positive 0.01 for the max. There, that looks pretty good. 
Now, how are we going to control this from our group input? Since these numbers are complementary, we can use the same value from the input to control both. I'm going to use the same process I used here for my offset for these min and max. I'm going to duplicate this combine XYZ, plug it into my max, and then plug the X into my group input. This is going to be my position random size. My default is going to be 0.01 and my minimum is going to be 0. Now I want this to control both the X and the Y. So I'm going to go ahead and do a shift right click drag over this line and plug this into both X and Y. Since these values are just this value times negative 1, I can duplicate this and add a utility math node. I'll take the output of the position random size, set it to multiply, negative 1. And now I can plug this value into the x and y of this combine xyz, and then use that as my minimum. So now, when I adjust the position random size in my modifier stack, the pages will spread out randomly. If you have multiple objects using the same geometry node tree with the exact same settings, you're going to get the exact same randomness. You're not going to want that. You control this random starting point with the seed option. So I'm going to connect the seed to my group input. Now for each stack, I can change the seed and it will give me a different random set. In addition to position, we also want to affect the random rotation of these pages. To do that, we'll add another attribute randomize node. We can just duplicate this one, and we'll bring it over here. Again, it's going to be a vector because rotation is stored as a vector. We're going to want to add to the existing value, and the attribute we're going to want to change is rotation. But we do see that rotation isn't currently an option here. One way around this that I found was to add a point rotate node before this node. I didn't change anything on this, but now under this menu, I've got point rotation. Setting the minimum and maximum all to zero, you'll find that adjusting the Z rotation changes the overall rotation of the pages. So if I set this to negative 0.1 and this one to positive 0.1, I get some rotation. I want to set these the exact same way I did the position on my group input. So I'm going to duplicate my combine XYZ, plug it into my minimum, duplicate it again and plug it into my maximum. I'll take the Z output and bring it to my group input. And I'll call this one rotation random size. I'm also going to move this up the stack so it's next to position random size. Again, this will feed both the min and the max, and we'll need to multiply the minimum by negative one. So we'll just grab this multiply node and stick it here. Now when I adjust the random rotation size, my pages rotate. So let's clean this up a little bit. We're gonna take the seed value that we're inputting and plug that also into the rotation randomizer. So there we go. Each object that has this geometry node tree on it can have a different number of pages, a different page thickness if you've got multiple page objects, the random shuffling, the random rotation, and then a seed value to adjust your overall random pattern. The only other thing that we need to set is the object that we're using for our paper. We have it hard-coded currently, and we don't want that. So what we're going to do is drag the object from the point instance over to our input. We'll call it paper object, and we're gonna move it up as well. So there you have it. If I go ahead and add a new mesh and add a geometry node modifier to it, and then choose the geometry node tree we just created, you'll see that I have all of the options available to me. So there you have it. I hope you found this video helpful, and I hope it inspires you to make something awesome. If you're finding my channel useful, hit the subscribe button. So until next time, I'll see you later.